Hi, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm still working through my trays and I've got those ones left from my previous tutorial. And funny enough, there's a nice number of 16 here, which means I could do some sort of layout um, 4x4 out of those if I kind of add obviously something to it. So if I use them up, that will be second tray will be ready in my... Um, on my shelf so let's let me see what else I can add to it so also I've got quite a lot of scraps which are two and a half by four and a half a lot of shirt pieces so let's use that also I've got a lot of pieces which are six and a half by six and a half so let me try to use those today and if I, we're going with the square, so it kind of feels like we're going with the magic number pattern. Let's see if I will need also four and a half by four and a half squares. Uh, so what do we have? Um, I think I may need maybe six and a half by two and a half pieces, but I will see. I, I've got those as well already cut. <laughs> so uh, let's see what we can design from all of those pieces and... If I need to add something, uh, I either take the fabric from the trays or I've got some ready pre-cuts as well. So this is, uh, like you remember from the last tutorial, two, two and a half, one and a half, one and a half, two and a half uh, strip sets. Uh, I think they should be about 12 and a half inches long, more or less. So I should be aiming for a 12 and a half inch block. And we will be working with the magic numbers because that's the easiest way of building a block. Just put this one away. So if this strip is 12 and a half long and then it's already six and a half inch wide, uh, then I can add this and that gives me already 12 and a half inch across. Then I can add a smaller square so that's four and a half that gives me those two giving giving me ten and a half inches that means I need perhaps a rectangle either here or here I just put it at the bottom at, at the moment so I still got here six and a half inch by two and a half inch uh, gap so I can either go for one piece which will be that size or I have a big box of two and a half by two and a, two and a half uh, <laughs> squares, so I can really use a few of those to fill in that gap. It's just going to make that design a little bit more interesting because I, there's opportunity to add more colors. Now the scraps I've got left are not that colorful. And if I just build blocks like this, you know, they will be looking okay. But I think I would like to add something that will bring them all together and also add a little bit of pop. So um, to achieve that effect of a little bit of pop and kind of carry something to bring those pieces together, I have been adding in the last tutorials solids to the mix. So let me just see what do I have in my cupboard. Okay, my recent travel to... Um, Scrapster brought me this piece of red uh, solid so what I will do I will use that solid as that carry color throughout all of the pieces so how I want to introduce this is I cannot change this part because I've got them already uh, prepared so what I will do I know I need 16 uh, blocks so I will cut maybe six of the six and a half inch squares and I will cut four of the four and a half inch squares and I may actually have some red uh, two and a half by four and a half in the box already if not I will cut um, few up and then a uh, few of the red squares so in total I need 16 different pieces from this fabric with different uh, sizes um, to kind of have one red in each of the blocks so um, I will quickly draw our block on the piece of paper so you you've got something to refer to and I will cut my um, fabric, red fabric and we'll start chain piecing our block. Okay, those are going to be very easy blocks so uh, nothing complicated for 
any level of the um, quilter but uh, instead we'll focus how we can do them quickly uh, that's my favorite type of quilt <laughs> quilt can be done very quickly so we've got our six I will start from the biggest ones here with the red so then I'm adding my square and I'm adding my rectangle and I will add a few of my squares here this one actually is not a square let's see this one maybe it's the same blue so I've got a lot I just took a pinch from the box but obviously I can take more <laughs> when I need them and then at the end I will add uh, one of those strips uh, to the side and you can see I have not cut them because the strips itself though they were cut to two and a half and then one and a half inch uh, because of the handling and because of the what type of fabric that is I don't believe this is actually six and a half inch so when I've got this part ready and I sew it in I probably will need to score it up to maybe 12, uh, 12 inch unfinished block but I will see so what I want to f start f first I think uh, I will start from those two then those two then I will add those two to this one, and then this to this one, this to this one, and this to this one. I don't know. Let's have a look. Once I start sewing, I will, I will think I will be able to work out the best combination of what to sew to what to make it quickly. Okay, with this second block I will try a little bit different order of sewing pieces it's just to see if that um, between here and here I had to cut the thread let's see if I can avoid that but if I cannot I cannot you know what I mean it's sometimes it is what it is so let's just put the next block but as you can see it was quite quick in the way so I you know if I have to cut the thread there uh, I will just do that it's not a problem so okay I think that would be nice layout so this time um, so I started from here before I will start from this piece first now uh, let's see if it will make any difference I don't think so but let's see no it won't because I still gonna have to now cut this one to add to this one so yeah no difference there I won't save time but that's okay so let me just show you what that block looks like now I like it because it's big it's big so as you can and you know it took you know few seconds really uh, to put it all together I mean if I had to start from this one obviously it would take a little bit longer but still quite a quick big block so I will carry on make those 16 blocks and I will pop them on the design board so we can see uh, how they kind of uh, can be laid out if you want to add more detail to your project you can use snowballs you can use snowball here you can use snowball here you can use snowball here you I mean you can you can change the design but adding a little bit of snowballs you can use crumb block here you can use crumb block here you can use something you fussy cut you know in, in this block or in this block so there's a lot of uh, options here I use like I said fabric uh, from shirts but obviously uh, if you use fabrics you have in your own stash which are not shirts um, you maybe color coordinate them somehow that will give you totally different uh, um, look but what I like in this design is easy and it's quick so if you're cutting your scraps to certain dimensions as you're pro pro processing your scraps and you have those kind of basic shapes ready, this is going to be a cool done in a day. So 
so as you can see I've been squaring up my uh, blocks and I did pop them on the design board uh, I had a few squared already and though it looks okay um, I think because I don't have any red color in that bigger piece here it kind of li looks a little bit something is missing so I've decided to add a little bit of very easy improv type of uh, <laughs> uh, cuts here so I've got, you know, the, the big piece of red which I was using in the um, blocks here. So I cut them to about five and a half by, I don't know, maybe like eight inches. It's it's really not that relevant what the exact measurement is. But what I will be doing, I will be adding my red to this spot here, but I will be doing some curve piecing. So I'll put it under and I will place my square on top of it. So what I want to do is make sure that here I'm sticking about maybe like a quarter or half an inch but on the right hand side I want to stick about well almost an inch here it's because the curves are eating your fabric and because my square is already squared up I cannot afford kind of missing here to, because I don't want to make them smaller so if I've got sticking out fabric here it doesn't matter how much that curve will eat the fabric uh, I should be able to square it up back to 12 inches so what I want to do is do my cut so I will start from here uh, more or less I will finish somewhere here again it doesn't matter I just want to have a nice gentle curve here and now I can remove the top bit which, because I don't need that anymore. Now I will take this uh, red piece and I will add it on top of it here. Uh, just align the top edges of red to red and I will mark where my uh, bottom square starts here. Now I can remove the other red piece and I know that where I want to start piecing is that I'm, you know, I'm starting from edge of my square but also from my mark. And I will take it to the machine and will slowly stitch it all together. So I've noticed that I'm more successful than not <laughs> with uh, curves uh, and piecing is first of all I'm going slow on those ones. Second my uh, length stitch is um, much narrower so it's easier to go with the curves. Um, I do have my quarter inch foot here but you, you, you know with the curves you don't have to as far as you keeping the same distance so it's fine but a quarter inch foot will not um, kind of harm so I'll go down and what I like to do is I, I grab this top fabric and I will be kind of maneuvering between those two to link them together but every few stitches every now and then you might need to pop the, the foot up align the fabric see if it's going well there few stitches foot up, align the fabric, maybe move a little bit, two stitches, pop the foot up again, align the fabric, move what you need to move. Just don't pull that, that those fabrics, because especially the top one, because it's caught on bias now, so it's easy to stretch it. Don't pull it, just every few stitches, put your foot up, align the fabric, you're just working with a little bit, like maybe a quarter distance at each time, so don't worry about what's happening here. Just focus what's happening between the needle and end of your foot. So as far as that bit here is aligned, you're going to be fine. And just go slow there. Align your fabrics. And because that curve is very, very gentle, especially towards the end, it's going to be, or oh, it should be very easy and nice to achieve that curve there. So let me just quickly, well, slowly finish. <laughs> Okay, I will take into the uh, iron board with the which way to the seam to go wherever fabrics is taking you that's my general uh, you know rule of the thumb I am not so precious with my seams as far as far as the fabric is happy and flat I really don't care which way the seams go so I will take it now to the iron board um, nicely press it again don't stretch it uh, what I usually do with this type of piecing I try to kind of finger press it first a little bit just to set that seam how how it likes to go 
and then put um, iron on top of it to, to kind of set it off. So this is how it looks now. I think it looks much better. Uh, if I find one of those um, blocks more plain than others, I might even go and add another curve here. Maybe not that big, but obviously somewhere here at the corner. I will see. I will do one corner first on all of them, pop them on the design board and see how I like it. So now I should have no issues here to square it up back to 12 inches. That's what I initially squared them off. So I've got sticking out here, sticking out here, plenty of fabric to um, make sure I can square it up. And here we go. This is how it looks. So that's one of the blocks and I did one more. So let me show you the other one. This is how it looks uh, with where I've got the bigger red uh, square as well. Gives that nice little bit of more contrast there. So when I start setting them up, I will have more uh, kind of options to play with it uh, for some sort of design. So I will carry on uh, at that corner to all of my blocks and I will meet you at the design board. Now, just to add quickly that if you like, you can use that other piece, uh, the one we curved from uh, to do the other side. The only thing is that curve will be a little bit smaller, maybe, unless you go with the wider piece at the beginning. So what I will do again, I'm matching them up, but I stick out here again a little bit, quarter or so, and then I make sure I stick out here about an inch. So you can see that curve will be much smaller, much corner. Um, the corner will be covered much less. But maybe with the one with the bigger pieces I can do that bit or I will see. But you can reuse the piece uh, as well. And I will do it the same way. I will go from here. I can almost trace the same curve uh, going that way. Then turn it around and, and you know do the stitching as before. So it will work exactly the same way. So we can reuse those pieces. Or if you don't want to you can keep it for another project. Before I show you a few designs, uh, have a look at some detail uh, for the individual blocks. So this is the block with the larger curve, the, the original curve I've made. Here is a block where I use the cutoff from the larger curve. The curve here is going other direction. And here I added two curves and where one of the pieces was too small, I just stitched a piece of red scrap to make it um, bigger. Um, it's just to make sure I could square it up to the 12 inch. So that this is how you can make the you know the most out of your uh, fabric. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you like this tutorial. Uh, if so, please leave your thumbs up, comment, maybe pin on Pinterest. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and my own website. All details with links are in the description below. Uh, the shop restock is coming on the 26th of October and if you subscribe to website you will be immediately uh, notified as well as you will receive an email about any new tutorial. Thank you very much for your ongoing support. Thank you for joining, thank you for watching and see you next time.